Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make layered paper craft projects with your Cricut machine. And I'm going to be using this free design from my website of a gorgeous little Labradoodle dog. Now you have been asking me for ages for a free version of one of my layered dogs. So here he is and I really hope you like him. He's definitely got the cuteness factor. We're going to go the whole way through making a layered paper craft project from downloading the design right through to unzipping the folder, putting it in design space, sizing it, cutting it, getting all that cardstock off the mat without it ripping and of course sticking it together. And whilst I am showing you with my little Labradoodle, you can use any of my layered designs using exactly the same techniques and it will work the same. And if Labradoodles aren't your, you know, preferred breed of dog, then don't worry, I have over 200 different dog breeds available in my SVG shop, which is shop.craftwithsarah.com. But for now, let's see how to get the Labradoodle freebie from my blog. To get the Labradoodle design, click the link in the description of this video to go to the download page. Or to browse all my free designs, head to craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs. There are over 40 free layered cardstock designs to choose from, with more added every month. For over 200 other dog breeds, plus other animals, seasonal designs and more, head to my shop, shop.craftwithsarah.com. Or again, the link is in the description of this video. All of my cut files come in zip folders when you download them. A zip folder is a way for me to send you multiple files with you only having to click download once. However, it does mean that there's a little extra step you need to do before you can load the designs into your cutting software. You need to unzip the folder first. The instructions on how to do this are a little bit different depending on if you're on a Windows computer, a Mac or a mobile device. I'm going to show you how to do it on a Windows machine, which is what I've got. But if you have something different, check the link in the description of this video to go to the full tutorial that accompanies this video. And I've got links in there on how to unzip folders on all different types of machine and device. For Windows computers, first find the file which you've downloaded. It will probably be in your downloads folder, but I've moved mine to a separate folder just so that it's not confusing with all of my other downloads. You know this is a zip folder because the little picture has a zip down it and the file name ends in .zip. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. To unzip a folder it's really simple. Just right click on it and then press extract all. It will ask you where you want to save it so I'm going to do mine in the same place and then press extract. You can see we've now got a copy of the folder, only this time it looks a little bit different. It doesn't have that zip down the picture, and if you look at the folder name, it doesn't end in .zip anymore. So this is the folder that we'll need to select when we're uploading the file in Cricut Design Space. But first, let's take a look at what's inside. There are several different files in here, and to start with, there is an assembly guide. If I open this up, you can see what it looks like. And all of my cut files include an assembly guide like this. And what it is, it's a picture of all of the different layers that make up this design. And then it tells you which order to stick them together in and whether you should use glue or foam squares for each one. If that looks a little bit confusing, don't worry. We're gonna go through all of those step by step later in this video. You can see we've then got three kind of similar files, but they all start with different letters. The first one starts with DXF, and this is for Silhouette users, if you're using the free version of Silhouette Studio. Next, there's a PNG version, which is a printable version, and you probably won't need this for digital cutting machines, but I just put it in there just in case. Then, this is the one that you'll need if you're using Cricut Design Space, and it's the file which starts SVG in the file name. It might show up as something different, so mine does say it's an SVG file. Yours might say it's a internet file, or a Microsoft Edge file, or an HTML document. It doesn't really matter what it says there, as long as you use the file which starts SVG in the file name, that is the correct one. We've got a file called Preview, and this is just a little photograph of the finished design so that if you need to, you can refer back to it to see what the design looks like when you're sticking it all together. 
And then finally, there is a terms of use file. And this includes all of my commercial use terms so that you know what you can and what you can't do with my files. In general, all of my files do come with commercial use, which means you can sell craft projects that you make using my designs as long as it's a physical, handmade craft, but you must not use my files to create new digital products and you must never sell my digital files or share them with other people. And that includes uploading my files on places like social media or Dropbox or other file sharing sites. Make sure you read the terms of use before you start using the file, just so you know exactly what you can and can't do with it. But now it's time to fire up Design Space and get that SVG uploaded. Here is my Design Space open and I'm going to start a new project by clicking on the new project button. This will create a blank screen for me so it's all ready to upload the design. Go into upload and then upload image. You can then click browse to find the file on your computer or you can drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and the file which starts SVG in the file name. So I'm going to click and drag mine in. Don't worry if yours doesn't show this little blue PS that mine does. It's because I've set my SVGs to automatically open in Adobe Photoshop. Yours will probably show something different there, but that, again, it doesn't matter what it shows. As long as you choose that file which starts SVG, that's the right one. It should look like this on this screen with all of the layers one on top of the other. If yours looks different and you can see all the layers next to each other instead, that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file. So if that is the case, just click cancel down on the bottom and then start again and make sure you choose the one that starts SVG. But this is looking good, so I'm gonna press upload on the bottom right and then this will upload into my recent uploads. Click it to get that green border and then press add to canvas. You can see that you've got all of the layers in the layers panel on the right hand side and that's everything that will cut to make up this design. These layers are grouped which means that you can resize it and all of the layers resize in proportion with each other. So you don't need to worry about you know changing each little one individually and making it so that it will still line up. You can use that group and do it all at once. To resize to a particular size, use the width and height boxes at the top of the screen. Make sure the little padlock icon is closed. If yours is open, simply click on it to close it. And when it's closed, that means that the width and height will change in proportion. So if I type, for example, 8 inches into the width and hit enter on my keyboard, you see the height changed too, so everything stays looking as it should and it doesn't end up being squidged. Just to show you what happens if it is unticked with your padlock, I've opened that up by clicking it. And now if I maybe go 14 inches in the width and press enter. Now, because that padlock was open, the height didn't change. So now my poor Labradoodle does not look right at all. And that's why it's important to keep the padlock locked. At this point, you may want to make some extra changes, particularly for the dog and cat designs to get it looking exactly like your pet. For example, you might want to recolor the layers, add extra details, or maybe even combine several designs into one. I have a free video series which goes through how to do all of that and more. SVG School teaches you how to customize SVG files in Cricut Design Space to make bespoke cutting projects. There are videos on how to recolor SVGs, how to make tricolor dogs, how to add patches to a dog's coat, how to combine parts from different designs such as heads and ears, how to add colors with name tags, how to turn layered designs into greetings cards, and even my top shadow box framing tips. To view all SVG school videos plus the matching written tutorials, head to craftwithsarah.com forward slash school. At this point, make any changes that you wish to make to your design and then, when you're finished, use the save button on the top right to save your design. And that means you can come back to it at a later time and all of your changes will be saved. I'm going to keep mine exactly as it is, which means it's ready for me to cut. First, make sure you've got the correct machine selected in the drop down here and then press make it. 
This will separate out all of the colours onto different mats. You might want to change the paper size so that it matches the type of cardstock that you've got. To do that, head on over to the left and then you can change the paper size. You do need to do this for every single colour, so I'm just going to go through and change all of this to A4, which is mostly what I've got. And you can see that this one does need quite a few different shades of brown. But of course, if you don't have that many, then you could always do it from the same brown. You'll still get the depth and the detail because of the 3D foam squares, which we'll add later. To save space on your cardstock, you can click and drag layers to move them about so that it just fills in the gaps a little bit better. It hasn't actually happened on this design, but sometimes you might find that it splits it onto different pieces of cardstock when it would fit on one. For example, let's take this head. Now this actually is correct as it stands because this is supposed to be a darker brown than the rest, but I'm just gonna show it to you as an example. So let's pretend that when we change the color to A4 of um, this layer, that this was the same color and it put it onto a different mat. You can move layers about to different mats by clicking on the three little dots and then press move object. Click the mat you want to move it to and you want to make sure when you're doing this you choose the same color. But I'm gonna choose a different one again just as the example so that I can actually show you how it works. Press confirm and then that shape has now moved to this mat and I can move it about to cut it. This is a great way to save your cardstock if Design Space moves it onto two sheets when it actually would fit on one. But for now, I'm gonna move that back to that darker brown because that is the color it should be done from. When you're happy with how all of your different colors are looking, press continue and then that will connect to your Cricut machine so that you can get everything cut out. For this next little part of the video, I'm actually gonna reuse some video that I shot when I did a tutorial on how to make the dogs a while ago. And that's because I've just realized whilst editing this that I didn't record new footage for what happens after you click that continue button. So don't worry, every step will be shown, but the dog that I'll be cutting for the next kind of two minutes of this video will not be the Labradoodle, it'll be one of my other designs. Um, so yeah, don't panic that it suddenly looks different. And then once I've shown you how everything gets cut out from cardstock, we'll switch back to the Labradoodle so that you can see how to stick that all together. Make sure you've turned your Cricut machine on so that it will connect, and then it will show you this. Now, if you've been changing the layers about, note that it might have still selected that last layer. So um, be sure to just scroll to the top and click on the first one to make sure that you cut it out in order. Um, otherwise, you might accidentally put white card on and then it cuts out the fawn and that would not be good. So I've just clicked on that top one and then I can click into the materials. For some reason, that will grayed out, but I think I can just click. That was weird. Okay, so if yours is greyed out, just click into it and it should add the colour again. I'm using um, some Sizzix card. I will show you the exact brand in a minute. Um, but this, I can get away with cutting it in as light cardstock on my Cricut machine. Um, I've got a Cricut Maker, so light cardstock on a light blue mat works for me. You might need to play about with the different settings, maybe medium cardstock or heavy cardstock. If you can't see those options, click into where it says browse all materials. And if you just search for card and hit enter, then you get the three different options. Um, so light, medium, and then there's also heavy cardstock. And if you press the star that appears when you hover over it, that will add that material to your favorite so you won't need to search for it every time. So I've got mine here and I know this will cut fine from light cardstock on a default setting. You can change the pressure to more or less if you want to add a little bit more weight to the cut or a little bit less. With some of the card I use, I need medium cardstock because it's a little bit thicker and occasionally I'll use heavy cardstock, but I try and keep it light um, just because it cuts better. All right, so let's click light cardstock 
If you want to change your mind at any point, you can just click where it says like cardstock and it will give you the drop down and you can change your mind. And that's really helpful. You can do that even when you've started cutting. So for example, if your white is a light cardstock but your grey is a medium, after your white has cut out and it is then telling you to load your um, blade and your mat for the grey, you can still click into this base material and change it to a different type. And then when it cuts the gray out, it will cut it from that different type. But then remember when it goes on to the next one, if you need to change it back to light, then make sure you change it back. So now we're ready to cut. We wanna put our first color on the mat and then uh, go ahead, follow the steps on the screen to cut out all of the different layers from all of your different colors. I get asked quite a lot what cardstock I use to make the dog breeds and my layered designs in general. I tend to use 160 GSM card or thereabouts because it's quite lightweight so it's easy to cut with the Cricut. My favourite brown card and grey card to use for the dog breeds is this set from Sizzix. Um, so <laughs> I've already unpacked the cards so I don't have it to show you but this is one of them um, which I use and you can see it comes in all these neutral colours and I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it's got a lovely texture on it. So it looks just that extra bit special. And because it's lightweight, you can see it's really easy to bend. It cuts well and having the pattern doesn't affect how it cuts. Um, and these just work so well for the dog breed. The colors are brilliant. They're very lifelike. Um, so yeah, check out the description for some links to where I get these. I get it on Amazon. Slide your mat under the pieces on the Cricut machine and press the flushing button to feed it in. This is a Cricut Maker machine, so it's a little bit different if you've got one of the other models. Once it's taken your mat in, press the flush and go button and it will start cutting everything out. Once it's finished the cut of one piece of card, it will feed the mat out and then to take it out completely, press the flushing button again and then that will give you your mat back so that you can take your card off. So now I've got my design cut out and I don't want to just peel the cardstock off like this because it will roll up and it won't be flat. Instead, what you need to do is turn your mat upside down and then slowly bend your mat backwards and then use your hand to hold the piece of card as flat to your work surface as possible. This wasn't the best example, I've only got these two little pieces from the pug. All you need is your little Cricut scraper tool. If you don't have one, you can use an old uh, credit card or something like that and you can just scrape them off. So just pull them off of the sticky. And then you're ready to carry on with the next color. When you're finished, make sure you put the plastic wrap back on your mat to protect it. Just make sure you push it down so it's nicely stuck and that stops any dust or debris getting in there until you next use it. Here are all of my layers cut out and I've just led them one on top of the other so that I can check that I haven't accidentally missed anything and also that I'm happy with the colours. You can see for the solid layers which are poking through underneath, I've used a slightly lighter brown than the flower layers and this is a great trick for making sure that you can see all of the dimension. We're going to stick all of these pieces of cardstock together using a combination of glue and 3D foam squares. I live in the UK and the glue I like to buy is called Kalau. It's really good because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some glues can do. Other glues that are more available in other countries are Barely Arts Glue, and that's spelt like the animal bear, and then Art Glitter Glue, and it doesn't actually have any glitter in it, it's just a name. Because this is quite a big bottle and my little designs have some really teeny tiny pieces, I like to put my glue into these needle tip applicator bottles. I get these on Amazon and they have a tiny little nib on them. I don't know if you can quite see how small it is, but it means I can get the glue around all of these spaces and it's really easy and I don't get any glue leaking out and causing a mess. The foam squares that I use are from Dot & Dab, but any brand will do. I like these ones because they're quite small, which means again, I can fit them where I need them to go. If yours are bigger, then that's okay. They're really easy to cut smaller with just a regular pair of scissors. All right, so let's get started sticking our little Labradoodle together. 
When making layered designs, we start from the bottom and work our way up. So I need to move all of these layers out of the way, apart from the very bottom two. And my bottom two for this design are the solid body, which includes the tail, and then the detail on top of that, which is the flowers. Now included in all of my layered SVGs, there's a PDF called assemblyguide.pdf and that shows you the order in which you're going to stick all of these layers together and also whether you should use glue or the foam squares for each layer. So whatever design that you're making, check out the assembly guide and it will give you all the information you need to make sure you stick everything on in the correct order. This layer here with the little flowers for the tail and these back legs is going to be a glue layer. So turn it upside down and bring in your glue. You want to make sure you put a good amount on here because this is our very bottom so it's going to have all the extra layers on top of it and that's going to end up quite heavy so we need to make sure that this isn't going to come off of our solid bottom layer. Now when you've got little outlines like this, I find it really helpful to get your glue and just go around the edge because if you want to put any glue on here, you'll find that it lifts apart from that base layer and it's just a little bit dangerous because you could catch it and rip it by mistake when trying to frame your design and also it just won't look quite as good if it's sort of peeling apart from that base. So I'm just adding my glue around the outer edge of these floral parts. And if you want to, you can also put some glue around the middles of the flowers, just for that extra bit of stick and stability. Now that my glue's on, I can turn it the right way up and then line it up against the layer that will sit underneath and then drop it down. The nice thing about the glue is you do have a little bit of wiggle room to move it about a bit before the glue dries if you haven't quite lined it up. But that's looking good, so it's time to move on to the next layer. The next layer for this Labradoodle is the solid body layer, and this is going to be a foam square layer. So again, turn it upside down, and then here are my foam squares. So I'm gonna place a good amount of these all around the edge and again we're adding you know a good amount because we want a firm stick we don't want this falling off and you want to make sure you get into all of the extremity pieces so like down on these legs and I'm also going to go around the head when making layered designs it's important to not only put your foam squares around the edge but also in the middle of pieces, especially when they're large, like this one. If I was just to go around the edge, so if I was to stop now, for instance, then you might find that in all of this empty space, because there's no stability for the cardstock, when I stick it on, it might dome down in the middle, especially when it's got other layers on top, because there's nothing here to keep the cardstock firm. I don't want that to happen because it will impact on the final appearance. So to stop that doming, I'm going to add some foam squares in the middle of all of these bigger sections. Now I can peel the tops off to reveal all of the stickiness underneath. Now these are all nice and sticky, I can bring those bottom layers back in. And then what I like to do is to line up these foam pad layers um, oops, <laughs> not drop it like I just did. Line it up and then just gently drop it down. And the reason I do that is it means that if I hadn't have lined that up correctly, because I've only gently placed it, I could pick it up again and it will come apart from that bottom layer without damaging anything. But actually I'm happy with how that's looking so I'm going to push down to get all of those foam pads nice and stuck. Our next layer is the main floral layer for the dog and this will be a glue layer. So I turn it upside down and bring my glue back in. Just 
start with the head, which is the most easy part. And then go around the edge with my needle tip applicator bottle. So you can see from this one in particular, just how useful these little bottles are. And you can be nice and quick with them and get into all of these small spaces. So as well as going all the way around the edge, I'm just gonna go around a few of the middles of the flowers for a little bit of extra glue to make sure it will stay stuck. Carefully pick it up and then we're going to line this up and stick it down. When you're pushing it down, be very careful that you don't push too hard because you don't want the glue to smush out and become visible. It does dry clear, but even so, you would still see it a little bit. So I'm just being really careful to push it down enough so that it will stick, but not so much that it will start pushing the glue out. We're almost done with our little doggy. We've just got the head to go, and there's a few layers that make this up. So we're gonna start with this one, which is my slightly darker brown, and this one will be a foam pad layer because it's giving us the dimension for the ears. So turn it upside down and add some foam squares. And once again, I'm gonna line it up with what's already there. And just gently lie it down and then push down when I'm happy with how that's all positioned. The next layer is this one, which is gonna go on there. And this one, I'm going to use foam squares for again to bring it up because the face would be sort of above those ears. Adding some of my foam squares on here. And when you start sticking the face on, this is where your little dog will really come to life. Line it up with all of those pointy bits at the bottom. There we are. And then the next layer, is this one which is creating a little bit more detail in the face and it's also giving us the circles where we're going to stick the eyes. This is a glue layer so I can add my glue and it's much easier now I don't have any of those little flowery bits to get my glue around and add this to the dog. And you know where it's meant to go because all of the little pointy bits will line up with what's already there. All right, so next we're going to add on the eyes. And the eyes come in two parts. You've got a white circle and a black circle. The white circles go on first and I find it's easier where possible to add the glue to what's already on your display rather than trying to fit it on the back of these tiny circles. Now, not all of my dog designs have the circles for the eyes um, on the layer below. Uh, it depends on the dog. So some of them, the faces are, don't have anything near to the eyes. So you'll just need to kind of best guess where it needs to go. One tip for making sure the eyes go in the right place is to compare it to how it looks in design space on your screen. And then what you can do is just take a pencil and do a tiny little dot in the middle of the face where you're going to stick the eyes and then that shows you where you want to put the glue and it can just make it a little bit easier to get the eyes in the right place. Now I've done the white part, just a little bit more glue and I'm being careful to just put my glue along the bottom of these white circles and that's because the black circles have little bitty extra circles taken out the middle. I'm not sure if you can see, but that's so that it will show the white through. And I like to position this so that the circle on the black eyes is pointing upwards at an angle. And then make sure you um, put the other eye on so that the direction of the little circle is going the same way. If you do it differently, then your dog can end up looking a little bit cross-eyed. But there we go. <laughs> he looks very strange at the moment without his face. So let's 
get that sorted. The next layer is this one to create his eyebrows and this will be a foam layer. Just notice my little black circles are coming away a bit. So just dab them down. And now I've done that, I can't remember if I turned that upside down. I did. <laughs> okay, it's always better to check before you add the um, adhesive if you're not sure, rather than after. Try and get my foam squares in there. And like I said at the beginning, if your foam squares are quite big, just use a pair of scissors to cut them smaller. You want to make sure that none of your foam goes over the edge of any of the parts of the layer, otherwise you'll be able to see it when you turn it over, and we do not want to be able to see the foam. Alright, so I'm using those eyebrow lines to get that into position. Three little pieces left, and I'm going to start with the muzzle and the tongue. So how the tongue works is we're going to turn the little muzzle piece upside down and add some glue just to that top bit along there. So I've put my glue here and then turn the tongue upside down too and put it onto the glue. And then you can turn it the right way around and just have a little play until you're happy with the amount of tongue that's showing and the position that it's going in. Okay, now we're going to add some foam pads here and you want to be careful if you're doing this straight away like I am that you don't accidentally move that tongue. So let's turn this round, add it on. I always think the dogs look really creepy at this stage before you add the nose. Something about just putting that last little piece on really completes the faces and the expressions. It looks a little bit alien-like at the moment. So let's get that nose on with a tiny bit of glue. I'll pick this up and just drop it down into position. And again, to make sure that you've got it in exactly the right place, you can refer back to the design in Cricut Design Space. Or I do include a photograph of all my designs in the download folder so that you can check that out. And there we go, our gorgeous Labradoodle is all finished and ready to go into our shadow box frame or onto a greetings card or wherever it is that you're going to put it. You can even stick it straight up on the wall with some blue tack. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make layered cardstock projects with your Cricut machine with my little Labradoodle as the star of the show. To get the free download, head to craftwithsarah.com or follow the link in the description of this video. Don't forget, I've got over 200 other dogs available at shop.craftwithsarah.com. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!